Welcome back guys. In this video, we are going to talk about the five economic sectors. These are the primary sector, secondary sector, tertiary sector, quaternary sector, and quinary sector. We'll start with the primary sector. The primary sector deals directly with raw materials. These are industries like mining, fishing, and farming. This sector is where the majority of humans work for most history, and this is where the majority of jobs are in developing economies. These industries are going to be located where the natural resources actually are. If you are a farmer, the activity is obviously going to take place where your crops are. Our next sector is the secondary sector. This sector is manufacturing. This is where the raw materials that were collected in the primary sector are used to create something. The manufacturing process adds value to these raw materials. Take a look around you. Most of the things you see were manufactured including the phone, tablet, or computer you're using right now. The United States economy's share of jobs in manufacturing used to be as high as 30%, but this was back in the 1950s. Today it is less than 9%. This is due to manufacturing becoming more efficient, requiring less workers, and companies moving plants to cheaper labor markets such as China or Vietnam. However, production output of manufacturing in the United States is actually trending upward. This is also due to automation because it costs the same no matter what country the business is based in. So some plants stay in the United States closer to the world's largest consumer market, which cuts shipping costs. Manufacturing that is based in the United States is also more likely to require higher skilled labor that can't be found in a typical lower skilled manufacturing labor market. This shift in the secondary sector in the United States has happened relatively quick, in just one generation. One Chinese city, Shenzhen, grew from 30,000 residents to around 20 million over just the last 40 years. This is due to China designating it as a special economic zone and the shift in manufacturing to China's cheap labor market. However, this may not be the case forever. China's growing economy could eventually force these factories to once again move to cheaper labor and real estate markets just like the United States. The third sector is the tertiary sector. This is also called the service sector. This includes things such as public health, hospitality, police departments, and retail. Most tertiary activities are going to be located where they are needed. You are not going to have a massive mall or hundreds of restaurants in a town with a population of just a few thousand people. However, for some tertiary activities, it doesn't really matter where they are located. Some services are now almost completely online. This includes companies such as Quicken Loans, which approves mortgages by phone and internet, Ally Bank, which doesn't have any physical bank locations, or Fiverr, which has thousands of freelancers across the world that can provide anything from graphic design to translation services. This is becoming more and more common. The next sector is the quaternary sector. The quaternary sector is actually a part of the tertiary sector, but it is defined by services related to research, education, and the distribution of information. This includes teachers, professors, and research and development divisions of companies. An example of this would be Bell Labs, originally the research and development division of the Bell Telephone Company, which had many inventions including the transistor, the laser, and cell phones. The quaternary sector is even less restricted by its location than the other sectors, with the exceptions of public education that provides services to the local population. Though not technically restricted, in modern times there seems to be a trend of quaternary sectors clustering together in communities. Cities such as San Francisco and Boston both have huge clusters of the quaternary sector. The book, The New Geography of Jobs, attributes this to local research universities that create new inventions and innovative individuals. These new companies formed by these inventions and individuals attract more skilled workers, which then attracts more companies needing skilled workers. This cycle continues creating a thick labor and job market. Though companies such as Facebook, Twitter, and Netflix could locate anywhere they want to, they choose to locate in these clusters because they claim their companies are more successful by simply being in a community of other innovative people. The last sector is quinary. Quinary still crosses over into the tertiary sector, but specifically includes people that make big decisions and rules. This includes top government officials and CEOs. These are sometimes called gold collar jobs. Now that we've covered all of the sectors, let's take a look at a few more examples by following the life of a product. Let's look at Ocean Spray's cranberry juice and its life before arriving to you, the consumer. Cranberries start out being farmed. This would be the primary sector because you are dealing directly with a raw resource. The cranberries are then shipped to a processing facility where the cranberries are turned into juice. This would be the secondary sector because value is being added by adding more ingredients 
and the juice put into containers. Now keep in mind, restaurants do a little bit of the same, but they are considered tertiary because they are focused on interacting with people and serving the customer rather than transforming the physical goods, such as the case here with Ocean Spray and their cranberry juice. The juice is then shipped, a tertiary activity, and then arrives at a grocery store, which is also a tertiary activity because they are providing a service by providing a market for consumers to make purchases. This guy, the VP of Engineering and New Technologies, could be considered quinary because he is making the calls for all the new technology his department designs for the plant. Now let's look at furniture. First, trees are cut down and harvested. This would be a primary economic activity. The wood is then turned into furniture through a manufacturing process. This would be the secondary activity. Once complete, the furniture is then sent to a retail store for consumers to purchase, a tertiary activity. A design consultant would be a coordinary activity because the service provided is knowledge-based. And the CEO of Bassett Furniture would be an example of quinary. Now let's do one last recap. The primary sector deals directly with raw materials and includes industries such as mining, fishing, and farming. The secondary sector is manufacturing. This is where value is added to raw materials. Factories fall into this sector. The tertiary sector is services. This includes things such as restaurants, police departments, public health, and retail. The coordinary sector is part of the tertiary sector, but specifically includes services that are knowledge-based, such as teachers and research. The quinary sector are your decision makers, such as CEOs and top government officials. I hope this video helped you understand the five economic sectors. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.